Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and the 6.5 is live in the IBM booth here at Mobile World Congress 2023. Daniel, how about the excitement this year? I mean, are we turning the volume level up here or what? Yeah, I feel like it's been thematic through these conversations that we've had. But you know what? We've been in both meetings publicly and privately, talked to CEOs from across the industry, and it's been really positive, the energy, the feeling. You know, while there's a lot of sort of pessimism in some of the media narratives, the optimism that we're hearing from these leaders of business and industry make me feel like uh, things are going really well. And obviously, mobile and connectivity makes the world go round. That's right. And let's introduce our guests, Andrew and Posse. Great to see you. Welcome, first timers to the 6.5. But I have to tell you what, we've had a ton of IBMers and a ton of folks from Nokia on the show. So thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. You Listen got to it. Be here. Thanks. <laughs> so, Andrew, uh, let's get started. Yeah. You know, you recently. Uh, you know, made a note of a new partnership with Nokia right. around 5G. Talk a little bit about what that announcement was and what this partnership is for you. Yeah, so private 5G is becoming really important um, to really deliver the 5G experience into warehouses, industrial manufacturing environments, anywhere where the public 5G network really isn't getting or where you need really tight security. Uh, and so with that, obviously there's, there's multiple components that have to come together. The journey that IBM has been on over the last couple of years has been to come to market with them some pretty interesting orchestration products that are being, pick, being picked up by major telcos, major service providers, um, analytics, um, and connectivity products that really we think are changing the world. And to do that, we have to have partners and the partnership piece is really key. So the private 5G offering is really a combination of the amazing radio technology that Nokia provide together with the orchestration management that we at IBM provide. Yeah, so Bossy, great, big, huge splash that Nokia made. I mean, new brand, new products, new services. You even went out of your way to explain to us analysts about your objective strategy and vision, which by the way, I really appreciate it. Uh, can you talk about some the benefits of, uh, you, you hit on a few of them, but if you're going to uh, expand upon the benefits of 5G to enterprises? For sure, but first, thanks for recognizing our <laughs> new brand. I mean, now, both. It's hard, to, it's hard to escape. It's everywhere. <laughs> but, but I love it. I mean, my journey started already on Sunday afternoon when we had the media event, and when it started to resonate and well known that, I mean, I have been, like, I mean, I have been so excited about <laughs> About but about the actual question, yeah, for me, it's a foundation. Yeah. It's a foundation for those millions of millions, uh, millions and millions of uh, enterprises to start a digitalization journey. Right. Start living the automation, having that 5G network, giving that robust framework, network to run their business operations more smoothly, right. more efficiently, more automated way. Yeah, and I mean, part of the beauty of 5G too is that you can almost have it your way, right? If you want uh, uh, high bandwidth, low latency, you can get that, or you get every, everything in between. That seems like it would be a benefit uh, to enterprises. Well, I've heard of a lot of smart warehouse uh, companies tell me, or or companies that are building out smart warehouses, is, is hey, boy, it's great to be on one level of communication, right? As opposed to five or six different protocols spread throughout everywhere. Does that resonate with you at all? Absolutely. I have been personally involved. I cannot mention the name, but I mean, similar cases. Yeah. And, and when you see the excitement and of the customers, when they are able to do the drone yeah. inventories over the warehouse, I mean, that is getting so concrete. And then when they are taking the calculator, doing the benefit calculation, it is, it is just amazing amazing how they yeah. are then re-channeling the assets and investments to support the prime new business logic. Yeah, yeah it, all I can think about is like cycle counting in retail and like for how long or in big warehouses, like yes. how just inefficient that is and how you have to bring in. Did that as a high school job, you okay. Know, right. Your old and, company, NCR. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> Um, but I'm saying like how eventually with whether it's drones, whether it's computer vision, I mean, we can change and create so much efficiency and expediency yes. and, and experiences. Um, Andrew, I'd love to, you know, kind of double click or kind of lean into this idea. You know, 
as an analyst, communication service providers, you know, they were really kind of struggling to figure out the 5G monetization. Right. And so with what you're offering now, you're bringing the opportunity for private 5G networks to be delivered to enterprise. Talk about that practically, both from the value chain for the CSP, and then of course, what the real life benefits are for the enterprise. Right. Well, sure, from a, from a CSP perspective, it's pretty simple. The only growth they're really going to have is going to be on the enterprise side. And for the most part, that requires new devices connecting to the network. Yeah. So getting to that point is really important. Now, the other question is, well, why then would an enterprise want to have lots more devices connected to 5G? I mean, after all, Wi-Fi kind of works in, in many environments. But think about how, how these environments, these, particularly the industrial environment, warehouse environment is changing so much. Remember how we used to carry a tablet around and do everything on a tablet or in an industrial environment, you'd go to a terminal and you'd type some stuff sure. and you'd go and look. You have a, your phone now and your phone is doing is doing that. But the application on your phone is so much more than your personal phone because that application has augmented reality on it. Um, if you're fixing something, it's now going to show you what you should tweak and what you should do. Um, there's all kinds of different things that are going to play out um, that, that require these tools, really, that are, are 5G connected. Yeah, so what you're doing essentially is solving a higher order problem, which might be discussed at the C-suite, which could be uh, uh, people challenges with frontline workers, whether, hey, we can't get enough workers to come in, or maybe we're trying to augment some of the work that, that can be done. And also, I can imagine supply chain, which is a huge C-suite conversation right now, yes. about getting a better handle on where is my stuff, even if it's work in process. And, you know, we've talked to manufacturers who, listen, I, I worked back in the mid 80s where robotics, where you put a piece of aluminum in and and, and press a button, that was robotics then. But, but now the idea that we have uh, machine learning, good machine learning, object recognition at the edge, uh, changes the game and enables these manufacturers to uh, go in and set up their lines much more quickly. Half the cost of manufacturing is setting up a new line. And that's where I've heard uh, big benefits from 5G coming to those environments. That's right. And it's also about the flexibility of those devices. And to, your, to your example, that made one thing. Yes. Right. A CNC machine today can make many, many things off a plan. Right. And it needs to get the plan from somewhere. Right. And what it makes in the morning might be very different from, from what it makes in the afternoon. Yep. So let's kind of tie this all together. You know, so here's a new offering, a new tie up, by the way. You know, it's great to see Nokia out there really freshening up the brand. Of course, IBM's had a really great run. You know, we've had Arvind on the show. We've had a number of the, uh, you know, lead executives. Thank you for making uh, us look really smart. Yeah. Because Dan and I both called IBM, like, watch yeah. this spot and have, so thank you. Yeah, we did. We made the call early that the hybrid and AI move was going to work. Yeah. But with all that in mind, where does this partnership evolve to? How does how does it get get more momentum? And do you see a future that you could share? Sure. I, I think just going around the show, there are so many separate conversations going on at different discrete parts of the industry. We talked about private 5G. There's another conversation going on around eSIM, another conversation going on around slicing, another conversation going on around cloud. Sure. And so our journey is really about um, taking all of these elements and connecting them and making them part of one, one solution. You know, enterprises don't think about these discrete components. They say, how do I get this application to work on my shop floor? Yeah. And we have to be able to answer that question cohesively. And so our relationship is really about extending that, that all the way through from the edge device to the cloud. Indeed. And I have had only here in Barcelona, I think already individual tens of meetings. It has been long, long, long days. Yes. And not a single one of those meetings have not been touching this opportunity of enterprises. Whether I talk to CSPs who see this as a new way of developing value in their business models, getting value out from their network, right. extending with the new capabilities. If I talk to enterprises directly, I mean, or I already mentioned that the scale of opportunity is astronomic. This is the starting point. And you will hear more about us and about partnership in, in coming months and quarters. That's a great place to put a pause in the conversation. Uh, and I want to thank both of you for coming on the show. 
first timers, but your companies are veterans at this point. We'd love to do a follow up with you when appropriate in the future. We'd love to know how the relationship is going, how you're working together to help solve problems uh, for the enterprise. So I really appreciate that. And by the way, Pat, that's such a good point. So often you and I provide our analysis on these tie ups. Yeah. And we say great tie up. We see a lot of great job. But then it's like, <laughs> what happened with it? And you know, of course, big companies like IBM and Nokia partner every single day. So we should put a pin in it. We should come back to it. But I love, I think what one of you just said, it's not about, you know, buying technology to solve technology problems. It's about buying technology to solve business problems. It sounds like that's what you're doing. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Great MWC. Thank you both for joining us here on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. There you have it for this episode of the 6.5 here in the IBM booth for Patrick and myself. We appreciate you tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all the episodes here, all the other episodes that we do each and every week with the best executives, most interesting companies, and of course, always moving the tech industry forward. But Pat, it's time to Take say goodbye. Care. See you later.